And first I wanna thank everyone for joining. I know it's kind of late. I'm in California. It's, it is six o'clock here. Um, and I know a lot of you are on the East Coast. And so I really appreciate you taking the time after your long busy day to make this a part of your day. This means a lot to me. So I am going to go to my presentation first. Okay, so this is the Belicious Product Knowledge webinar. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Cricket. I recognize a lot of you. Um, I am also known as the Wax Chick. And I am a licensed educator and advanced educator for advanced waxing. I have been an esthetician for 16 years. I have been educating people in waxing for 15 years. And waxing is really my passion. But more than that, I am here, I believe, my reason for being is to help all of you become more successful and skilled and confident waxers. Because I believe that waxing is a skill and with the right practice, the right tools, you, anyone can master this and be super successful. So today's going to be just about building confidence, skill, technique. We can go into how to upsell clients on waxing a little bit so that you guys can make more money waxing because waxing is super profitable. It is one of the most, if not the most profitable um, service. It costs pennies to do and because it requires a lot of skill and expertise, that's why we can charge more for it. Welcome to those who joined us. Just so you know, everyone's muted when they initially join. If at any time you have trouble hearing me or you lose your video, um, you can just type in the chat box or leave the meeting and then re-enter. Sometimes that helps too. Um, I am also the creator of the Belicious line of waxes and waxing products that was created in 2012. And I did that because all of the waxes that I was using in my treatment room as an esthetician, they just, they were good, but they weren't doing exactly what I wanted them to do and behaving how I wanted them to behave. So I created the line wanting to make it as pure as possible because I believe that the purer the wax, the better the results are going to be. There's always going to be some sort of a trade-off. But when you have a really pure wax that doesn't have a lot of extra ingredients, things that don't really need to be there, the wax can then work exceptionally well to remove the hair and give you the best results possible. So that's why I created the line, because I wasn't seeing what I wanted in my own practice, on my own clients, and because I was an educator and I would have private training for students in brows and Brazilians and I would use whatever wax I was using at the moment and they would ask do you sell this wax and I didn't so I felt that I was not fulfilling that need to educate and provide a superior product so that you could get everything you needed all in one place. That was the second reason I came up with my own product line. So now I not only have my education, but the wax to go with it, if you need it. All of the techniques that I teach and train, you don't have to use my wax to do. I'm happy to share my tips and te techniques with you so you can become a better waxer no matter what line you're using. So what's up today? Today we are going to cover the Belicious line of professional waxes and home care products. I'm going to show you what the proper consistency of the wax should be. With the Belicious wax, it's not a matter of what temperature you set the wax warmer on, it's all about the consistency of the wax. Because temperatures fluctuate so much and people use so many different warmers, 
um, it's hard to say, oh, it has to be at a level four or on medium heat. It's just going to be a little bit different for everyone. And everyone's climate in their room is different. Everyone's climate in general is different. And that plays a part on how you set your warmer to achieve the right consistency, if that makes sense. We're going to go over what wax to use when and where. Uh, the two hard waxes, which are pina colada, a non-polymer hard wax, and pumpkin pie, which is a polymer hard wax, the liquid gold strip wax. And then we're going to do, uh, first we're actually going to start with the pre and post care products, which is the Wonder Whip, which is the balm that you use before and after waxing. Then the Buff Stuff Exfoliating Cream, which you can again use right after waxing. These two products are also home care. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to upsell these to your clients every single time, especially your Brazilian clients. And then the dusting powder, which is just a light talc-free dusting powder with all of the hoo-ha about talc these days and cervical cancer. I wanted something that was all natural and the dusting powder is super fine. It's very luxurious and silky feeling. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. And now I'm gonna start with the products. So grab, if you're anything like me, um, I like to write down my notes. So grab a pencil, grab some paper, and get ready to take some notes. And if you're anything like me, my little doodles on here, I always doodle on my paper. So for whatever reason, that helps me remember things better. So now I'm gonna switch back. All right, so the first product I want to start with is, I'm gonna put my, so when I do my skin analysis, um, I am looking at the skin for a few different things. Now, I'm going to kind of talk about the Brazilian area, but this applies to all areas of the body. When I do my skin analysis, I'm looking particularly at the Brazilian area. Those are my specialties. I'm looking to see if the skin is dehydrated, if the skin has any evidence of current or previous ingrown hair, like little hyperpigmentation, little dots from picking, all of those things that kind of alert you that this person has issues with ingrowns. When you see these kind of things, you want to put that in the back of your mind as you're doing your analysis. And I always ask questions. Even though I see it, I feel like sometimes like I'm like a dentist because I'm asking the questions I already know the answers to. When I see these signs, I know they experience ingrowns. So I know right away that I can help them and that I have a home care product for them to use that's gonna help their skin to recover and to lessen those ingrowns. So always ask questions that you know the answer to because what that's going to do is when your client gives you the answer, you can come back to them and say, yes, that's what I'm seeing here. How long has this been happening? Is this a concern for you? You wanna dig a little bit deeper, be curious. Always be more curious about your client and their situation because you can always pull something out of your back pocket to help them at home. So when I see that they have those signs, the little hyperpigmentation spots, I will say, you know what, I'm gonna recommend that you take home today, what I'm using on you right now to prep your skin, which is the Wonder Whip Pre and Post Hydrating Balm. Now, this is not a moisturizer. Moisturizers, as you guys know, are sealers. They seal whatever you put them on top of. So if your client's skin is dry and dehydrated and they're just going, oh, I moisturize. Well, they're putting a moisturizer on top of dry skin. What are they doing? They're just sealing it in the dryness, right? So what we want them to do is use some a hydrating balm. 
The Wonder Whip has uh, shea butter, mango seed butter, rose hips, barrage, evening primrose, jojoba, grape seed oil, soybean oil, and vitamin E. So this combination is going to penetrate the skin and actually hydrate it, make it soft and supple from the inside out. Now, why is that important? Because when the skin is dry, tight, and dehydrated, the hair cannot get out. So, and it holds on to the hair. So imagine when you're waxing. This, this is the skin and this is you. So, and here's the hair. So you're pulling the hair this way. The skin, when it's dry, tight, and dehydrated, is pulling that way. It's a tug of war. You're trying to take the hair out and the skin will not release it because it is dry, tight, and dehydrated. So what ends up happening is you pull and then you break these hairs instead of removing them cleanly from the follicle. So that's the other thing you wanna let your client know. Hey, I see that your skin is dry, tight, and dehydrated. Today, I'm gonna to focus on getting, the, getting as much as possible but I want you to know that when the skin is dry, tight, and dehydrated, I'm playing tug of war. So tell them what I just told you. This helps them understand so that when you're finished, they don't go, hey, cricket left a bunch of stubble. This was the worst experience ever. I always educate my clients and say, you're not gonna go home today with a super smooth result because your skin is dry, tight, and dehydrated. That is why. You're going to go home with Wonder Whip. Now, how they're going to use the, how you use this before you start your wax. Um, actually, I'm going to put some gloves on, even though I'm just doing it to myself. Um, so, I put this on pre-wax anytime you find that the skin is dry, tight, and dehydrated, whether that be in the Brazilian area, the lower leg especially. If you like waxing arms, I don't, but focus on the elbows primarily and the hands. Those are dry, dry areas. So always make sure you're putting it on here and here. Uh, knees, feet, lower leg, uh, on the back. These are places that tend to be drier and more dehydrated. So what you do is you take a bit in your, your hand and you're gonna instruct your client how to do this too because you're gonna sell this to them so that they can use it at home so that the next time they come in, it's like flossing with the dentist, right? The dentist knows that you didn't floss. You can tell him you flossed, but he knows you didn't floss. So it's the same thing. If someone doesn't use this at home, I know right away. Well, first pull, I know, because the hair is like, no, I'm, I'm, I still get that tug of war. The more they use this at home, the softer and more supple their skin's going to be, and the easier the hair removal's going to be for you and for them. So once you put that in your hand, you're going to emulsify it. And it heats up with the heat of your body, and it just becomes liquidy, so you don't need a ton. When you instruct them on doing this at home, welcome everyone. When you instruct them on doing this at home, you're gonna instruct them to warm it up in their hands first. Then see how much more you have. If they were to just put that on and then try to rub it in without first emulsifying it, it's gonna be a pain in the neck. So they have to emulsify it first. Then this is gonna spread. And when you're doing the Brazilian, I always tell them, use it at home, everywhere, just all over the back, the anus, the labia, all the creases, the mons pubis, everywhere, because it's just gonna make their skin softer and supple in general. For those who are new, welcome. Um, there is a chat button down at the bottom of your screen. If at any time, um, you can enter questions there. I'll probably answer them at the end, but you can either enter your questions there or you can write them down. And at the end, I'll go back and answer everyone's questions. Sound good? So that's how you work the Wonder Whip. You put it on your hands or on your gloved hands. Your client's gonna put it on their hands. You emulsify it first to get it 
nice and liquidy. Then it'll spread anywhere. They really don't need a ton. Now I use a little bit more when I'm waxing, so I'll probably use maybe a dime size amount before and a dime size amount after. So before you wax, again, I'm gonna reference the Brazilian, that's my specialty, I do a ton of them. So I use about a dime size amount. I only really use it on the labia, the behind in the creases, around the anus, and uh, I don't put too much on the mons pubis during the service. Uh, because really it doesn't really need it that much. It really hydrates the labia and those more delicate tissues of the anus because those can be super dry where it gets very crinkly back there. Um, that needs to be protected and hydrated. And again, when you, I get this question a lot, um, whenever you see dry skin or ashy skin, trust your instinct. If you don't feel comfortable waxing it, don't wax it. Just educate your client and say, hey, you know what? Today I'm noticing that back here uh, by, by your anus, I'm noticing it's really ashy and dry. I don't feel comfortable waxing today because I might lift skin and cause um, some irritation for you. And I, and I prefer not to do that today. But you're going to go home with this, start using it, that's gonna improve, then next time you come in, we'll be able to get that. And your client will understand that they'll appreciate you being upfront with them. So always, I guess my, my big thing is, I'm super big on educating my client. Even if it's, some, if it's something they may not wanna hear or I might not wanna say, like, I'm not gonna give you the best result today. You're not going to be as smooth and hair free as I would like you to be but they appreciate that because you're setting expectations. Super important to set proper expectations. Okay, so that is the Wonder Whip. I think I explained that pretty well. If I didn't, you guys will have questions later. Next, um, I'm going to do, so after you do a Brazilian, if you have a client that has moderate to severe ingrowns and I classify that as a handful, five, five or more. If they have five or more ingrowns, um, so let me go back real quick. Everyone goes home with this. All Brazilian clients go home with this. It's mandatory. Now, if they have moderate to severe ingrowns, they'll also go home with the buff stuff. Now the buff stuff is the exfoliating cream. This works by a um, pumpkin and papaya enzyme. It's very gentle. It's not going to be irritating post-wax at all. It's just going to gently exfoliate the skin. Then what normally happens is if someone has a lot of ingrowns that you're unable to get, with waxing, because their skin is dry and dehydrated and those hairs are trapped, once you do a treatment in your treatment room right after you wax, they, you will see those hairs popping right out. And then you can go back over it with um, maybe the pina colada just to get those little strays that came up right after the exfoliation. So I'm gonna take, I don't know if you guys can see, so I'm gonna take um, just about that much. It, it, it's like a little bit more than a, ah, it's not even a dime, okay? So how this works is you're just going to spread it on the area like a lotion, kind of quickly, so that you have a light coating, so that it kind of looks like that. Then you're just gonna wait maybe 30 seconds to a minute. And what's gonna happen is it's going to kind of dry, I guess. So what you're looking for, I can still feel it's tacky. What you're looking for is to touch it and it's not gonna feel tacky. I don't know if you can see, as it dries, it kind of gets a little bit whiter it may or may not be the case on your person. 
it's a little hard to see with the lighting. So now I feel like it's dry. So once it's dry, what you're gonna do is, let's see if I can move out of the way. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna start buffing, just kind of gently. I'm using a bit of pressure, but, and then I'm gonna come up, you guys can see. Get on there, can you see all that? That's coming off, that is dead skin. So you're just gonna buff, and normally I put this on the mons pubis, that is the area that is most prone to ingrowns. So, and it doesn't really leave any residue behind. If you want to, you can go back and use a little cotton round with some water to remove it. Otherwise, really there's no residue. Um, and it leaves it super smooth. And if you see any hairs pop out after you do that, this is when you would go back in with your wax and try to get those strays. Now, if you've seen any of my videos uh, on my online certification training, I have a technique that I go in the opposite direction of the hair when it's stubbly to try to um, catch all that hair up. So that's the technique that you can use um, when you have these little ones coming out, because most of the time they're going to be little ones. Then what you would do is go back after you did the exfoliation to finish that little treatment with the Wonder Whip and do the Wonder Whip on top of that or after that. Now, this little service of the exfoliating anyone that's got ingrowns or moderate to severe, I don't charge for that. It takes literally less than three minutes. And what I'm really doing is this is how I'm selling these two products to my client. I apply this and I say, this is going to help make your skin soft and supple so that when you come in next time, the hairs are gonna come out easier, which is gonna make my job easier and it's gonna make it more comfortable for you, a more comfortable experience. That's my goal always, is to make this experience as comfortable as possible. And then I show them how to use the buff stuff because this is also what I want them to, to go home with. So the retail size of the Wonder Whip is two ounce. And that lasts, uh, they're gonna use that twice a day, morning and night, and forever. Like, just that's how it's gonna be. And it probably lasts, I don't know, two or three months. They're not using a ton of it at home. And it re I retail for 18, so do the math. It's not too terribly expensive. Then the buff stuff, this has uh, about 30, 28 to 32 applications. Um, you might find clients that love the Wonder Whip so much, they use it in other places, like their hands, their feet, and they totally can. So you can recommend anytime you're anywhere that your skin is dry or dehydrated, go ahead and use the Wonder Whip. You can use it anywhere. So this is going to be two to five times a week, maybe even more, again, depending on the severity of the ingrowns that they're experiencing. When you, what I normally do is everyone starts with Wonder Whip. They use that for a month. They come back in, if they're saying, you know what, I'm still experiencing ingrowns, it's still this, and I say, okay, let's add this. Unless it's super bad when they first come in, I don't hit them with the one, two in the beginning. I just go one, and then later I might go one, two. So these two for ingrowns, for sure. And I think I, this one's gonna be two to five times a week. Again, it's super gentle. It's not going to be irritating at all, even right after waxing. So that's those two. Then the other pre-product is the dusting powder. There, dusting powder. So this is, again, you analyze the skin. If someone has extra moisture, be it from sweat or from oil, you, I don't pre-clean the skin before I wax. 
So I don't use astringents or cleansers or anything like that because I like to have a little bit of their natural oil on the skin to help protect and hydrate. So I don't really pre-clean. What I will do is take a little bit of the dusting powder and it's super fine. Um, you can see, super fine. It's very silky. Ton. And I will take a cotton round and use that, especially people have really oily forehead or eyebrows. So sometimes I may get a cotton round with some water on it and just wipe that a little bit if it's too, too terribly oily or if they're wearing makeup that is super thick and heavy. That's the only time I'll do any cleaning like that. Otherwise, I just use the dusting powder to help me to absorb some of that sweat or oil or moisture. I've never had any adverse reactions from doing it this way. I've been doing it this way for 16 years, so I think it seems to work pretty well. And I'm of the mind that you don't need um, six or seven steps before you start waxing. Um, just me. Okay, so those are the, hold on, I'm gonna answer a question. So these are the pre and post products, Wonder Whip, for before and after waxing, before to hydrate and protect, and after to calm and soothe and again hydrate. So you don't need two different products for pre and post. And the buff stuff, I'm gonna answer your question, Claudia. So the buff stuff you're going to use in the treatment room after you wax someone who has moderate to severe ingrowns to give them a little treatment to show them what they need to do at home, because you're gonna sell them both of these things to use at home for their ingrowns. And yes, right after wax, and then they're gonna use it at home two to five times a week, depending on the severity of their ingrowns. So if someone, if they come back in, say the next month, Claudia, and you notice that their skin is still dry, and you're saying, hey, are you using your Wonder Whip twice a day? Are you doing the buff stuff twice a week? Yes, okay, let's up that to three times a week or five times a week. They can use it every single day. In fact, if you want it, it's not gonna hurt them. So it's kind of like playing, um, I don't start out with the most severe, you know, it's not that it's severe, but I don't, you know, I don't wanna overwhelm them at first. But if you notice, Excuse me. If you notice that they're a little slow to improve, then go ahead and bump this up. Two times a week, three times a week, four times a week. However you see fit, it cannot hurt them. It's not gonna hurt. Okay, so that is the pre and post. Let me set this to the side. Now, um, I'm going to do the waxes. Is the audio okay, everybody? Yeah, okay. All right, um, I'm going to adjust my camera so that you can see what I'm gonna start with. You know what, I'm gonna start with the liquid gold strip wax. So what, First of all, you know what I want to talk about a little bit. Again, I'm just going to go over the Belicious line is formulated very purely. If you look at the ingredients, there's only really five ingredients in, in each wax. And I don't have a liquid gold can, but for example, if you look at, this is the Pina Colada non-polymer. It's got rosin, beeswax, a proprietary blend of oils, titanium dioxide, and a fragrance. That's five things. That's it. Now, a lot of waxes, you turn them over and their list is like that. So again, everything's just kept at a minimum. We dive deep into the ingredients to make sure that what we're using is going to be superior and give you the best results. So you're, it's not gonna be you're not gonna have a ton of ing ingredients to contend with. 
Okay. So now I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit to show you the liquid gold. Okay. Oops, sorry. Let me try this. That's a little better. Okay. So the liquid gold, this wax warmer that I'm using, I use these at home and in my treatment room. These are I sell them on the website. You can get the double or the single, and they are professional's choice. What I love about these warmers is that they heat the wax can from all the way around, sides, bottom. It's not just a heater sitting on the bottom, like on the stove top. So that keep, helps to keep your wax a consistent temperature. And here's a little tip for you. I got some wax on my glove, and you know how sticky that is. So I'm just going to take a little Wonder Whip and emulsify that in my hand. And that's going to get rid of that sticky tacky. So it's another little tip for you. Whenever you're waxing and you get something, it's, you get some on your glove and it's sticky, you don't have to change your glove. Just put on a little Wonder Whip and you're good to go. So let's look at the consistency. I usually have my liquid gold set in this particular warmer to about a four. And this is the consistency. It's fairly thin. It's not water. And it's not honey. But it's fairly thin. Now to apply the liquid gold, I'm just going to use my, I'm going to show you on my forearm here, scoops this to the side, put my forearm out. Okay, so I like to twirl my stick and I continuously twirl my stick from my pot to my person so that I don't make a mess because I hate to clean up wax bits. So if you don't have this technique down, practice, practice, practice. So I'm gonna use my forearm. I don't have any hair, I'm just showing you application technique. So it's very thin. I put it first and then 90 degree angle straight down. And you can see how thin that application is. And I use these heavy cotton strips. It's actually a cotton roll. I like to cut my own strips. And then you go back over it. No sticky, no tacky. That is My favorite thing about the liquid gold is that the, it doesn't stick to your gloves. It doesn't leave a sticky residue behind so that you don't have to clean your client, buff stuff them up to try to get and remove that oil. So this is the, these are the strips I like to use and it comes in this roll. This is like a nine foot roll and it's about two and a half width. Normally for body, I'll use about a 12, about a strip like that, which is about 12, 13 inches long, um, because it gives me more control than those smaller strips that come in the little package like that. It's too small for me. So that is the liquid gold. Did anybody have anything they wanted to ask me before I set this one aside? No. If you do, type it in the box. If not, I will go on. 
Okay. I will go on. Please don't fall. Okay. Now let's do the hard waxes. Just okay. I'm sorry, it's a little bit dark. Let's see if I can help it a little bit. Okay, so This is the pumpkin pie polymer wax. Now, I'm trying to get a little bit more light on it for you. Let me see. No, hold on. Try to do this a little bit bigger so that okay, let me try again. That's a little bit better, I think. Okay, so th this is the pumpkin pie polymer. So the polymer is plastic. It has a little bit of plastic in it. And this is the consistency you're looking for. Again, this is a professional, professional's choice warmer that I have on my website. I keep the setting at between about three or three and a half on this warmer so that we get some more light in here. Killing me. No. Okay, so I keep the setting at about three or three and a half. This is the consistency that you're looking for. I'm just going to pop it out of here. So that's the consistency you're looking for. We don't really look for temperature as much as we look for consistency. And when you're working with these waxes, you really want to get in and scoop all the way down to the bottom. You want to scrape the bottom to stir it. Don't be afraid to do that. This isn't one of those waxes that has a hard center that you're working around. This is actually a wax that you can use from the bottom up. So don't be afraid to get in and stir it. And that's the consistency you're looking for it to ribbon off the stick. And then when you apply, I just did a series of how to use hard wax. I don't know if you've watched that, but if you follow me on YouTube or Please go ahead and do that if you don't, and you can watch the series on how to use hard wax. Uh, but I'm gonna show you a little technique here. So when you're using hard wax, it's all about the tip of the stick. Because for hard wax to effectively work, it needs to mold and shrink wrap around the hair. If you don't use enough pressure, it's not going to be able to do that. So instead of, say this is the hair, this is the hair and you're applying the wax. If you're just using a light pressure and you only coat half the hair, it's not gonna shrink wrap down to the base of the hair, base of the follicle or where the follicle opening is. It'll only shrink wrap to the, to the part that it gets to and then you remove it, it'll break that hair off like that. And so you'll have stubble left afterwards. So you want to use a firmer pressure and get that wax all the way down to the follicle opening so that that wax can wrap around 
and shrink wrap there so that it can remove. The great thing about hard wax is that it shrink wraps to the hair and it doesn't stick to the skin and the hair. That's what makes it more gentle. So, and when it dries, it'll pretty much come off anything. That's the other great thing. So when you apply, you're focusing on the tip of the stick. And again, I do the twirl. You're focusing on the tip. So I always deposit my wax first because that saves the wax. You can get more out of your wax if you deposit it first. Then I spread it with the tip. Normally I'm able to hold the skin tauter. Since I'm doing it on myself, I can't really hold it as tight as I would like to. But you see that the application is thin and you're keeping a little lip around the edge of the wax for your application. Just because that helps the integrity of the piece so that when you remove it, you're hopefully not gonna leave a lot of um, wax behind. And how I remove it is I just take the tip of my stick that's already sticky, put it to the tip of my wax and do a little tip to tip flick so that I can get just a little, little bit here so that I can grab it to remove and stay always low and close. But you see how thin this is. You can see my hand through it. So that's how thin your application should be. You should be able to see your hand through the application. When you get proficient at using hard wax, one can of one pound of hard wax will yield you six full Brazilians with a little extra left over. So once you get really good at using your hard wax, the, pina col the pumpkin pie will give you six Brazilians per a pound. So that's the pumpkin pie polymer. Next is the pina colada. This is the non-polymer. So again, it's all about the consistency and all about stirring your wax all the way down to the bottom. You can hear I am hitting the bottom of the tin. And it's again, this might be a little thinner than I might like, but still ribbony. Still want it ribbony. What's great about the, oh, so for the pumpkin, sorry, I'm gonna go back. For the pumpkin, I use that for underarms and Brazilians. And then for the pina colada, I use it for underarms, Brazilians, face, and brows. I don't do body waxing with hard wax. The body waxing is strictly the liquid gold. So that'd be arms, legs, backs, chest, if you do a lot of body waxing. Um, if you want to use hard wax for body waxing, I would recommend the pumpkin pie polymer just because it's able to spread a little bit thinner than the pina colada. And that's because it has polymer. The polymer helps it be able to do that. So this is the pumpkin, I'm sorry, pina colada. There's only two, you think I'd get it right, right? Um, so the pina colada is non-polymer. What is great about the non-polymer is that because it doesn't have polymer, it's especially good at the fine hairs of the face and any part of the body. The polymer, when wax has polymer, it makes it a little less able to get the fine hairs. But without the polymer, it makes it better. It's better able to get those fine hairs. The application technique is exactly the same. It just doesn't, um, move over, see if I get some more light. It, again, I always deposit my wax first, and then you can go straight down, or you can go back and forth in a figure eight. It's all personal preference, it doesn't really matter. I'm staying kind of in the center of the wax, leaving that lip around the outside as I go, constantly molding and molding. When it starts to kind of set and give back, you know it's time to stop. You can no longer mold. 
but you want to mold as much as you can before it starts to set. That's the beauty of the hard wax. If you mold and mold and mold until it's like, yeah, I'm not going to mold anymore, then you're done. If you just go once or twice, you may not get, remember that connection we were talking about, where it goes and shrink wraps down to the base. That's what you want. So sometimes you need to really mold to get that to happen in the best way. Now, right away, you'll already notice that the, um, and my arm is probably a little dry right there from being waxed so much this evening, but, It's a little thicker. You can't quite see through it. It's a little bit thicker than the pumpkin pie. And that's because it's non-polymer, but it's not too much thicker. If you compare them side by side, I'm gonna use my other arm, give this one a break. I'm not a lefty, so this may or may not be a good experience. So I'm able to spread pretty thin and see how it like, I feel it telling me I'm not going to spread anymore. And then again, tip to tip. And they set pretty quickly. So here is the pumpkin and here is the piña. This one you're able to spread super thin. And this one is still thin. So you see it's not too terribly different. There you go, that's a little bit better. So you can see that both are thin and both really remain pliable. This one's been sitting out for a little bit and it's still pliable. This one's pliable too, but I just pulled off. And in fact, I'm gonna use the shiny side of this to try to get these little bits that were left behind on my arm. And if you have bits left behind and you can't get them with the wax, you can always grab your Wonder Whip. It's rare, but my arms are dry. That's why it's happening. So you just take, see what happens when you try to, it doesn't really go as well. So you just use your Wonder Whip to help release any bits that are left behind. Okay, so that is, that's all the products. We made it through. So now, um, does anyone have questions that you'd like to ask? Actually, there's one more thing that I'm gonna do before I open up questions, and then I'll open up questions. Put this to the side. Okay. Let me go back to my slideshow real quick. Okay, so what else? Um, if you are interested in more waxing training, I have online advanced waxing education available. I do also private waxing education. We can do in person or we can set something up via Skype. And I also offer waxing business coaching if you need help with your waxing menu, your wax website, 
any waxing issues or questions, I can help you with that. Um, go back to this one. And I need you guys. I appreciate you so much. So follow me, like me, tag me, subscribe to me, share me, review me, testimonial me. Buy me products are, I felt uh, a little bit piratey by the end of that. So um, yes, I need you guys to stalk me. That is my, take a picture, go ahead and screenshot a picture if you'd like. And you can email me at beliciouswax.com, reach me at thewaxchick.com. There's my phone number. I'm on Instagram. Please follow me at The Wax Chick on Facebook at The Wax Chick, YouTube at The Wax Chick. I'm doing a lot more YouTube these days and creating a lot more great um, video demonstrations and education for you guys. I want you to be the best. I want you to have all of the tips and tricks. Okay. Now, all right, okay, so now I'm gonna open it up for questions. If you have a question, um, I don't think if, I don't think you can raise your hand. Can you raise your hand? Do you see a thing where you can raise your hand? Okay, cool. All right, so um, raise your hand if you have questions. I'm gonna answer Claudia's question. I use powder before waxing humid areas like Brazilian upper lip underarms. Is that bad? No. That's perfect. Wherever, if you are in a humid environment and your client comes in and they're sweating anywhere, use the powder to absorb that moisture, whether it be sweat moisture or oil moisture. If someone's extremely oily, at like in the summertime, I live in the desert. So sometimes we're 110, 115 degrees and people come in right after work. They've been driving for 45 minutes to get to me and they're sweaty because they've been sitting and stewing in their own juices. So I will, um, usually I will have like a feminine wipe or something. And that's a great thing to have for your client is a little feminine wipe so that you can um, offer that to them. Nobody wants to, you know, come in after they've been sweaty and maybe they've been working out or they've been driven from work, whatever it might be. They don't want to take their clothes off and, and feel like they're unclean. So to have the feminine wipes ready for them is awesome. Then if they're still excessively sweaty because it's so hot or because of whatever is happening in the environment, um, I will take a clean um, paper towel and wipe down and then I'll use the dusting powder and the Wonder Whip in the respective areas as needed. So even if they're sweaty, I still protect the labia and all the dry creases. And the uh, mons pubis generally uh, will get sweaty and the leg creases or the bikini line. That's the most kind of sweaty part. But yes, um, that is not wrong. You are doing the right thing, Claudia. And I don't have have a distributor in Canada, but I do ship to Canada. So you can get my products shipped to you wherever you are in the world. Okay, Angel, what happens? So Angel's question is what happens when you get lifting with a hard wax and you prep the skin? What's the best way to prevent this? That's an awesome question, Angel. I'm actually getting ready to do um, a little presentation about that on YouTube. But so what happens? It's our job to, to analyze the skin first up, right? So we look at the skin and we're looking, is it dry? Is it dehydrated? Normally, uh, lifting occurs on the labia and the dry creases like the anus. Um, and if you're waxing the face, the lip, um, those are really the, the and the brow area, particularly, particularly right here. So analyzing the skin, number one, to prevent, okay? 
I'm going to say well, how to prevent first, and then I'll tell you what to do after. So how to prevent, really analyze the skin, really ask questions. A lot of people are using retinol these days, Retin-A, specifically Retin-A. So here's the deal with Retin-A. You may or may not know this. This may be new information or old information. So Retin-A, what's special about it is that it goes into the bloodstream. So it doesn't matter if they're just using it on their face. It goes into the bloodstream. So anywhere that you're waxing on the body is going to be, or potentially could be affected. So if someone's using Retin-A, then you wanna say, okay, normally, you know, we wouldn't be able to wax because you're using Retin-A, but hard wax is by nature more gentle. So you should be able to wax and do a few more things with hard wax that you can't normally do with strip wax. But there are always, exceptions and sometimes things just don't go as planned so analyzing the skin and getting as much information as possible from your client that's why um, a client intake form is so important and asking them even if they didn't write anything on their form are you taking any medications even if they didn't list anything i always say ahead are you taking any medications and then they'll say, oh, I take this, that, or the other. Are you using anything topically on your skin? I want to confirm that they didn't answer these questions, and I want to make sure that they're not using something that's going to contraindicate them. So number one, that's how you prevent it from happening, hopefully. I mean, we can't 100% obviously prevent it. So even though you prep the skin, can you tell me, Angel, let me, I'm gonna, um, gonna find you. And I'm gonna unmute you. Okay, Angel, can you tell me, um, hey, Ginger, can you tell me where this happened? Or what part of the body? Uh, usually, um, I never really experienced anything on the brow so much. It usually happens mostly um, in the Brazilian area. Like mm -hmm. you said, the labia. Sometimes I'll, I'll find it on, on the mound as well. But, um, you know, but it's usually... Now, sometimes... Sorry, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, usually I'll prep it and everything. I'm like, so why would that happen? I know sometimes when it's obviously dry, you know, I can tell. But when it's not, I'm wondering what really caused that. Was it my technique? Was it, you know, something that I did that... Sometimes, that? like, sometimes I'll notice that... And I don't really call it lifting per se. Mm -hmm. Lifting to me, my definition, I'll just clarify. My definition of lifting is like a rug burn. When you remove and you can definitely see like a shiny raw spot on the skin. Right. And I ask the client, do you feel any sensation? Is it stingy? Does it feel tingly? Is there any irritation? They may or may not notice it at all. But, right. and sometimes your eye tricks you, but like, I understand what you're saying, like on the mons pubis, kind of like on the, um, in the creasy part, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think what happens there is because that's where the underwear sits. Yes. And so I think that it just kind of creates dry skin and friction in that area. And the, the wax by nature is kind of exfoliating. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes it's just exfoliating some skin, not necessarily lifting. Okay. Because it doesn't look the same as lifted skin. Does that make right, sense? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's almost so, like it almost is like a dry lift. It's like mm -hmm. if you said like usually mm -hmm. the lift is a little bit shiny, but when you have that dry lift, it doesn't look the same. But it's still you can tell that some skin was removed. Right, or, and I think it's just exfoliation and not lifting. I mean, it's kind of a fine line, but not really, because when you lift, you're actually getting down to a live layer of skin. Right. But the exfoliation part of it is, isn't the same, because it's two different looks. Right. But that's a great question. Um, so what do you do after? Well, I mean, normally, if I see that and I go, it's just exfoliating some dead skin that was there because of friction. 
Mm-hmm. And then I'll just put Wonder Whip on it. It's not going to bother them. Like, say, a, a, a lifting, like an actual lifting and getting down to the live skin where it looks raw. Right. Um, so, yeah, either in either case, though, the Wonder Whip is great. And to, to make sure, a lot of times we don't want to say anything to our clients, but to make sure that you ask, hey, do you feel any irritation, any tingling? If they do, then you can say, hey, use, use your Wonder Whip in these areas for the next three or four days. Okay. Just to help um, soften the skin and hydrate and protect the skin if something like that should happen. Okay. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, sure. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. That's a great question. Um, Did anybody else want to raise their hand or ask a question? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, let me get you on mute. Okay, I know I'm gonna say your name wrong. Can you say your name for me? Mikal. Mikal, okay. All right, Mikal, I love that. It's beautiful. I like the spelling. All right, what's your, yeah, what's your question? So I sent it as a message. I don't know if you saw it, but. Oh, I see it here. Okay, one of the questions I had is right around the anus when people have piles or hemorrhoids, like how do you prep the skin there? I know I'm going to run into it. I'm the only body waxer in our little town, so. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, I just use the Wonder Whip, and if you don't want to get in there with your hands, I will take a Q-tip sometimes. Okay. Put it in the Wonder Whip, and then just go right around, and then over, even over those things. Okay. And give it kind of a generous over the top of those things, like hemorrhoids and stuff, because it's going to help to protect it and kind of like make it slippery so that if by accident, you know, when you're working in that area, it's tough because sometimes even no matter how hard you hold the skin away from those things, sometimes the wax goes, nope, I'm going to go right up to it. Yeah. Yes. (laughs) It's a tight area there. Yes. It's very tight. So um, just kind of do that to protect it. Just put like an extra coating of Wonder Whip on there. And okay. that will kind of um, repel the wax. <laughs> yes. <All right. laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Anybody else got questions? Ask away. You can ask me anything. You raise your hand. Nobody? Yeah. Oh, Debbie. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me unmute you. Okay. What's up? I just have a question about the um, the Wonder Whip. Okay. So the the you know you would think that you're putting something oily and then you're using the wax. It doesn't. It, it yes. doesn't like those two would work together. I understand your question. It's a great question. So the Wonder Whip is a hydrator not a moisturizer so it does not it's not oily and it's not greasy is there a wait period between the time you put it on and the time you actually start to wax or does it matter here's what i do my procedure is i will put it on the labia the dry bits i always start my brazilian on the behind yeah so my clients lift their legs up I start on the behind. If I feel like I got a little too much, I'll take a paper towel and do a quick wipe. Okay. But it penetrates really quickly, especially if their skin is like, I'm not going to say like super dry because obviously I wouldn't be waxing if it was super dry, Um, but it penetrates pretty quickly. So the wax is not going to slip and slide unless you have way, way too much on. Okay. It'll penetrate. You'll still be able to put your wax on top. It'll still shrink wrap around the hair, and you'll still be able to get a good removal. Okay. And then the other question I have is the price of um, how much is the pina colada and the pumpkin pie? They're nineteen fifty each, and then there's also um, bulk pricing. Please don't ask me that because I don't know it. <laughs> okay. And then um, the buff stuff. How much is the buff stuff? At eighteen. 
the one, the two ounce Wonder Whip and the two ounce Buff Stuff are 18 list price. However, if you want to set up an account to wholesale uh -huh. to your clients, mm -hmm. you can do that. And it's like 12 and some change each. Then you sell for the difference. You can sell yeah. for whatever you want, just not less what than. Do you, what do you retail them for? I retail them for 18. But I have some people that retail, like say the Wonder Whip, they'll re retail for 30. Um, it's whatever your area, or your client will bear. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, when, if you currently have an account and, or even if you don't, to set up a wholesale, I would just need the, uh, your sales and use tax. If your state collects sales tax, mm -hmm. I would just need a copy of that email to me. And then I would change your account to reflect that when you log in to order those things for retail, you would get the retail price. Okay. Okay. And then um, as far as pricing for a Brazilian, what is the, what, what is the average? I'm going to spotlight you, Debbie. Um, well, I, where are you again? I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas, but I'm in a kind of a, um, in a, in a nicer area, I, I guess you could say. Okay, and so here's how, I don't even know why I asked you, because it doesn't matter. Here's my philosophy on pricing. I don't price based on how long it takes me. Mm -hmm. I price based on my value. Mm -hmm. I don't price based on what my neighbor charges. I price because if you're using superior product, if you have advanced education, to me, brows and Brazilians are more difficult services. They require a higher level of difficulty to perform. Whether it takes you 15 minutes or 45 minutes, it doesn't matter. It's a higher degree of difficulty. You cannot, no one, pretty much no one coming straight out of school can do a brow or a Brazilian confidently and proficiently. I know I couldn't. When I got out of school, you have to have extra education. You have to know what you're doing. So for that, you charge more. So charge, let me ask you, what do you want to charge? Well, right now, like for Brazilian, I, I charge 80. That sounds great to me. Okay. Then that's where I'll leave that. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. Unless you want to raise your price. If you have, if you think your clients, how long has it been since you raised your prices? Uh, I haven't, and I'm I'm new to the game on this too. Um, okay. I've been, I was a massage therapist for ten years, and then I added esthetician to my title, um, oh, and just started doing that in July. Well, congratulations! That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I've been doing it since July. And so, how many Brazilian clients do you have? Um, I have about five that okay. come on a, on the regular, and they don't care that you charge eighty dollars. No. So then you're good. Were you thinking of lowering your price? Well, I just didn't know if, I mean, you know, some people were like charging way more than that. And, How much um, were they charging? Well, some people were charging 90 to 95. And I'm like, well, I don't know if I need to do that. So, I mean, I know you can do what the market will allow, but I don't, I don't want to be, I want to be fair too. I don't want to um, put myself out, out of the ball game. Right, and you can all. I think eighty dollars is is pretty good. Right, you can always raise your price little by little. If down the road you're like, I want to raise my price. Right, and you can right. keep if you want to. You can keep your your core people that that started with you. You can keep them at eighty, but everybody new pays eighty five. Right, you know something like that, just to kind of show your loyalty to your people that started with you if down the line you feel that's just an easy way to raise your prices. And also another easy thing to do if you're, if you're just incorporating or Brazilian curious, you know, and you want to incorporate it, but you're not sure how to do it, never price yourself low. Always start with the like, say you wanted to charge 90, but you're just starting out and you're like, I want to practice first, but I want people to pay for it. Um, say, uh, normally $90 for a limited time, 75 or whatever that way. And the limited time is up to you. 
when once you feel like you've done enough that you feel good confident you know i don't need to do this anymore then you just say oh that offer is no longer valid or you can do it for a specific amount like the first 10 people get it at this you know something well i'm pretty comfortable i'm pretty comfortable at doing it i did take your um online course um two of them actually and th those helped a lot plus i also saw you in i think it was dallas at a oh that was fun Last that year. was doing the, you, you were doing back you were doing yes. that yeah so i saw you there so i feel pretty comfortable in the technique and i i have not I, I don't know i mean my first brazilian i did i just did it and it just was like okay i got this so <laughs> I, I, I know so i feel pretty comfortable doing it so as far as the price goes i feel like the 80 dollars is good right now i good i think i'm I'm with you on that, Debbie, and I think you hit a good point too in that doing these services, especially brows and Brazilians, it's all about your confidence. It's all about how you are able to show up and make your client feel comfortable that you've got this. Yeah. So um, the more you do, the more you're going to feel that way and be able to express that and just own that. Like, I got this. Don't worry. I got you. So yeah. um, that's perfect. I think you're you're charging absolutely the right thing, and go on with your bad self. Great, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, let's see. Got another couple of questions. Ginger, thank you, thank you, Ginger. I'm so happy to see you on here. I hope you're still there. You're awesome, um, Ginger trained with me privately and several years ago we've still remained in touch she's super awesome okay does anybody else have any other questions while you have me live and i'm always available please know that i send me an email um i prefer email because i can really respond to you i will answer like the Instagram messages and Facebook messages, but sometimes I just don't know where they're coming from. I, <laughs> I'm like, how do I see that mess? I'm a technical mess sometimes. So um, it might take me a little bit longer on those before I even see them and know they're happening, but I will respond to you. I want you guys to be, I want you guys to be the best and feel the best and confident and make the most money you can waxing. That's my goal. Um, and I love education. I love, and also, yeah, tell me what you need help with. Hey, can you do a video on this? Hey, can you answer this question or something? I would love to be able to give the information that you want to you to help you feel more confident, grow your business, et cetera. Um, CC says, any new products coming out? Um, you know what, CC? Here's my philosophy. And I feel weird sometimes saying this, but I have three awesome waxes, a polymer, a non-polymer, and a strip wax. My personal opinion is that if you have the right wax, you don't need six or seven or eight or nine different waxes because hard wax is by nature less um, irritating to the skin. So why do you need a million of them? The pina and the pumpkin and, and the liquid gold, they all work on coarse hair. They all work on any hair type. They all work on any skin type. It's not that you need um, you know, all these different waxes to do all these different things. Now the pina colada, what it does have in it is the, um, what the heck's that ingredient? Hold on. <laughs> Why can I not remember? Oh, titanium dioxide. So it has a titanium dioxide in it, which makes it more comfortable for the client. So it helps the client experience. So here's another tip. When I'm waxing someone for the first time, I, Brazilian, again, I'm gonna to go to my Brazilian, I have both waxes going at all times. And I will try a strip of pumpkin and a strip of pina and I will see which wax works better with this person. Has nothing to do with their hair type, 
It's nothing to do with their skin type. I just want to see which wax is going to work better for them. It's like, it's weird. It's not like, oh, this person has coarse hair. I'm going to use the, what would you normally do? Like a polymer, you might choose a polymer. When most of the time I find that the pina colada works better for really coarse hair or someone who is darker skinned um, and has that really coarse curly hair, the pina colada oftentimes works better than I thought it would work. I kind of, you know, go back and forth. So I don't think that you need, um, a million different things, unless there's something that I find that's that I just can't live without, that I think everyone should be doing, having, seeing, or being in their treatment room. I don't foresee coming out with any new products, unless you guys have any great ideas, CC. Um, I just feel like less is more, and you don't need a million things. If you have the great core things to help you do your job and do it spectacularly, why do you need anything else? It's a really long answer to a very short question. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. All right, is that, I think that's it. No one else has, oh wait. Thank you, Cece. The angel says, I happen to love doing Brazilian waxes, but struggle with marketing. Is social media really the best way to go besides word of mouth? I don't really have an advertisement budget right now. Thank you. Okay. Um, social media is where it's at, and I can help you with that, Angel. Um, we can do a private waxing business consultation. I can help you kind of determine what you can do with the least amount of money for a um, an hour waxing business coaching session with me, it's 200. So if you want to set that up, um, I can help walk you through some things that you can do that won't break your bank and will bring you, um, what you need. And I, I really believe that social media is the way to go these days. Nobody is paying for like paper advertising, right? That never works anyways. It's always word of mouth. But social media is huge. Everyone should have at least an Instagram page, at least a Facebook page, at least. Don't be afraid of the technology. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Um, does it sound good? Oh. Is that a new hand raised? Okay. Unmute. Okay. Unmuted you. Hi, Cricket. Yeah. So I had a question. My niece and nephew are severely celiac. Are your products celiac friendly, like for skin contact for the gluten disease? There's no, um, like how, like, tell me, tell me about this. Tell me so about products this. like. They can't use like toothpaste because there's flour in the lining of the toothpaste bottle. They can't use certain lotions because the thickener is wheat based or it has some sort of color additive that they can't use because it's a gluten derivative. So my sister uses na all natural products, essential oils mainly for like cleaning and things like that. She even has to make their body soap and things like that out of Castile soap. So okay. I'm just wondering that kind of thing, because in our tiny town, there's a lot of people with celiac disease. Oh, really? Not just my family. Would these products be gluten-free, certified, friendly? That's super interesting. You know what? I, I am pretty sure that they are. I was just talking to my manufacturer the other day, because what you see is... What, Sometimes, um, yes, like you were saying, like toothpaste has a flower lining or whatever. Sometimes there's weird things. So this is transparent. The ingredient that you, the ingredient list that you see right. are the ingredients. It's completely transparent. There are no hidden like uh, things inside of say the rosin or something that we're not disclosing or, okay. you know, and it's not like manufactured in a company that manufactures anything with wheat or anything like that? No, strictly a wax manufacturer. Okay. 
that was just my question. <laughs> I will. No, that's a great question. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna write that down. Write it on a little. Write it on a wax strip. <laughs> Because down the line, you know, my sister and I worked in group homes as well, and we're not ones to hand our kids razors down the line. And she's talking about waxing as being uh -huh. an option for them. So I just kind of want to plan ahead and that kind of stuff. So No, that's a great thing, especially when you have a lot of uh, potential clients. Yes. In, in your, in your that's weird that there are so many people with celiac. Well, there's people coming, it's basically a retirement community with some adults, you know, with children, but it's a, just a tiny town called Thompson Falls. We're in Montana. And so we have a lot of people from California and Washington, Idaho. So it's just people transplant themselves here. And so celiac friendly, gluten free okay. is important to them. All right. I'm going to double check this. Um, but I will email you because um, uh, I have your email. Okay. Thank will, you. Yeah. Thanks for the question. I love learning new things. Okay. Oh, Debbie, hold on. Let me get you. And unmute. Okay, Debbie. Okay. Uh, one other question. Um, the size of the bags versus. Um, uh, a, a can um, of wax. Yeah. How how does that work? Is is the bag? Does it is it like two, two cans? Would you say? So the I the tins that I sell are six. No, that the tins that I sell are twenty ounce tins, and they hold about sixteen ounces of product. So the bags are 16 ounces. So one bag will fit into the tins that I sell. Now, a lot of times you'll see wax come in tins of that's a 14 ounce. So um, this particular tin that I sell to Melton will will hold one pound, one bag of wax. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, I'm just, I can't read, I'm, I'm not in my salon, so I'm, I'm not sure what size ounces the cans are that I use. Um, These are 20 just, ounces, so they're a bit taller. They stick out yeah. above the warmer, which is fine. Okay. Um, so they, they're not flush with the warmer. They okay. stick out a bit above, but it holds an entire pound. Got it. Yeah. Most cans are flush with the top of the warmer. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, thanks, Debbie. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay. All right. Let me see. Angel. Uh, Angel. Last question. This is her last question. <laughs> Does your Wonder Whip also act as an ingrown serum? A lot of wax and cleanse are used to this. Yeah. Okay. So yes. Um. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. So the Wonder Whip. Um how it helps ingrowns is it makes the skin soft and supple. I said that when skin is dry, tight, and dehydrated, the hair can't get through. When you're waxing and you break off the hair, it kind of goes boop and goes back down a little bit, and then it can't get back out, so it grows in. What does the Wonder Whip do? So it's not a moisturizer. It's a hydrator. It's going to penetrate the skin. So it's going to make it soft and supple so that the hair can now go, oh, I can get out now. So next time they come in, you're going to see hairs coming out that maybe weren't coming out before. And then you're going to be able to wax them. So in that respect, yes, it is helping the skin to be soft and supple to lessen those ingrowns. And at the same time, it's making the skin. So there's other products out there that you can use for ingrowns. I find that they focus a lot on the exfoliation of the skin, which in my thinking dries out the skin and makes it more dehydrated and more tight because you need the hydration along with the exfoliation. You can't just have the one. You're trying to combat the 
um, dehydration and tightness of the skin and make it soft and supple. But if you're constantly putting products on it that are gonna dry it out um, or exfoliate it, then that means it's gonna, by nature, kind of dry it out. So you've gotta put that moisture back, right? That's my thinking. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you for verifying my thinking what makes sense. <laughs> so yes, that's why Wonder Whip is an awesome, just by itself, it's not drying the skin out. Um, and it doesn't have to because it makes the skin soft and supple by being able to penetrate and hydrate. When the skin's hydrated, it's much more likely to be all, yes, hair, come on out. Instead of, no, you can't come out. I'm dry, tight, and dehydrated. Um, I'm gonna liken this to um, blackheads. When you're doing a facial on someone who has acne, their skin's dry, tight, and dehydrated. How hard is it to get those blackheads out unless you really prep the crap out of the skin first? Super hard. It's a struggle. It's the same thing with the skin and the hair. It's always skin first and then the hair, if that makes sense. Get that skin in good condition. It will release the hair cleanly from the follicle, then you'll be able to remove it cleanly from the follicle, smoothly and easily. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. All right, you guys, well, it's almost 7.30. I could talk about waxing forever. Yeah, you're welcome, Angel. I could talk about this all night long. I appreciate you guys spending your evenings with me, and um, especially, it's probably late where most of you are now, and just thank you so much. This meant a lot to me for you guys to, to help you guys and to make you more confident, give you more information about the Belicious line and feel more comfortable using it. And as always, I am here to answer questions anytime you want. So please use me. I want to help you be successful and feel good about using your products. So that's it for tonight. I thank you all again. And uh, keep an eye out. If you're not on my newsletter list, please join my newsletter. Um, join my YouTube, my Instagram, my Facebook. I'm serious, stalk me because I'm going to be doing a lot more webinars. I'm going to be doing some uh, just Q&A sessions. Uh, I'm going to be doing a lot more things to help you guys build stuff. And let me know what you want, what you need, and I can build around that. So I appreciate it. and. Um, see you guys later. Ciao.